Hello, everyone, and welcome to PCM's Webinar Wednesday. We are thrilled to have you with us today for our webinar, HP Devices Featuring Intel Optane Memory Deliver an Amazing Performance Boost to Your Applications. Joining us today is Jorge Hernandez and Rob Hatch. We're going to get right into our presentation in just a few minutes, but first I have a few housekeeping items. Please enter your questions in the question box on the right-hand side, and I'll relay those to our speaker at the end of the presentation. We do send out a survey at the end of the webinar. Please fill it out and let us know how we did, as well as topics you'd like to see covered on future webinars. You should see that survey in your inbox later today. Speaking of future webinars, please be sure to check out our weekly webinar schedule on our website at www.pcm.com forward slash webinars forward slash archive. We are recording this webinar. It will be available for playback in a few days. Recordings are posted to our webinars page along with our upcoming webinar schedule. There you can also find previous webinar recordings. Please be sure to stick around for a chance to win an HP all-in-one PC. We will be picking a winner at random. And with that, we're going to get started with our main presentation today, and I'm happy to hand it off to Jorge. All right, thank you, Jorge. Uh, Welcome. Well, good morning. Good morning and good afternoon for uh, everyone joining. My name is Jorge Hernandez, uh, Sales Development Manager uh, and covering uh, our uh, HP account uh, for North America of commercial products. So today, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and talk a little, little bit about Intel Optimum Memory. So I'm just going to walk you uh, guys through um, the technology, give you an, an intro on what it exact, what it actually is, what it does, and what it doesn't. Uh, go through some of the most common questions that I get uh, around Intel Optimum Memory, and then I'm going to give uh, a pass to my friend uh, Rob Hatch from HP, so he can talk to us about uh, the HP desktop portfolio that currently has uh, Optimum capabilities and we have available uh, as far as other of the desktop solutions. Um, as for he initially mentioned, I will take some questions. Uh, and at the end and we'll try to answer as much as we can. If not, we'll find a way to go ahead and uh, provide the answers to you in a later time. So as we start, um, let's go ahead and, 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 and see what's the panorama, right? So what's what's happening right now and, and what, are, what are we seeing in the desktop world? Um, so what we have is that the, the purchase drivers for users for desktop, they, they really want to continue uh, driving the performance story. Uh, normally, uh, when you talk about notebooks, uh, users are, are concerned about mobility, battery life, but when you talk about desktop users, performance continue, continues to be a high purchase drivers, uh, and it's one of the hot items or hot topics when they're deciding what to pick or, or what do we expect from a desktop. Right? So security, again, is another of the key drivers, and we could probably have another webinar around security and talk about all the features that Intel and HP bring. Uh, into the equation around security, but tonight we're gonna today we're gonna focus only on upping. But definitely, security is one of those uh, key items that we're looking for. And then the third one is storage capacity, right? So when we're talking about desktop users, they still want those to keep those high capacity drives available. So we're not talking about uh, users that settle with 128, 256. They really want to go into a 512 or one terabyte storage capacity, right? So uh, these are necessities, or these are key decision uh, items when uh, IT system administrator, when an owner, or when any of uh, the companies are looking to buy or refresh their desktop fleet, they're looking mostly into those three aspects uh, of, the, of the equation, right? So um, the, uh, uh, as everybody knows, I mean, yes, Intel has been known for our performance story, our processors, and our, and our high-quality products for years. But now we're piling on a new technology, uh, which is called Intel Optin. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about it, uh, Intel Optin in a second. But I just wanted to paint a picture of where we are uh, as far as ecosystem and what are the purchase driver for vessels, which kind of go ahead and make sense a little bit down the, down the presentation why I started with this. So uh, again, going back to the, to, to the topic about local storage, um, there's a lot of data that is generated and, and the data is still continuing to increase, right? So 
the need for larger capacities will continue. I mean, we don't see users moving, right? So if you use examples of gaming, uh, a game like uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, 5 takes about 65 gigabytes of storage just for the game itself. If we're talking about uh, video game, uh, I'm sorry, video producers, just a 4K raw video can render around 742 gigabytes for an hour of 4K raw video, right? So for those uh, companies or those users that normally are editing or looking at editing video, that capacity is important. So if we go to more of a small and medium business or, or someone that's working with the GoPro, again, with the GoPro video, we're talking about 29 gigabytes of size per hour of video. So that's a lot of storage when we talk about if we're going to have 10 videos, we're talking about 290 gigabytes. So definitely a smaller solution of storage. Uh, it, it, it's not what we're looking for at desktop. And, and most of that editing, most of that, that production continues to be done on desktop systems. So that's why we, I, I want to keep talking about why storage matters and, and why interlocking plays a, a good part there. So as you can see, the, 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 the majority of desktops will continue to ship their hard drives uh, until 2020. So that's what we're seeing. But now, normally, when we, when we think about that spinning drive or we talk about that hard drive, we think, oh, their systems are slower. And, and, and normally the connotation is that, well, if I want speed, if I want faster velocity uh, on my system, I'm going to go with uh, an SSD. But then you get into that um, crossroad where if I go with an SSD and get the performance, then I don't get the capacity. And if I want the capacity, then I'm going to have to pay large amount of dollars in order to get 512 uh, SSDs, for instance, which could easily go north of a thousand dollars right so as we I would start piling on those solutions and, and it, it kind of gets into a process of uh, a compromise should I compromise storage space or should I compromise uh, speed so um, this is where Intel opt-in come in play right so we're, we're proposing changing the whole setup of the traditional PC configuration so uh, if you if you go back into what we've been used to seeing in a PC for the past I would say 20 years uh, we got a CPU, we got a hard drive, uh, and then we have RAM. And that has been the setup for, for years, uh, at least as far as I can go and remember. So we have a storage solution, which is a non-volatile storage, which is the data that gets stored in the hard drive, spin, long-term information. Then we got the DRAM, or RAM, uh, where we have volatile memory, where we have that cache, that quick information, quick access data that we need to keep access. And then we have that communication between the SATA or within the, the storage solution and the processor. And the processor kind of orchestrates the movement of data. And, and that's how the way the traditional PC has worked for, for years. As we move into our proposal or where we are seeing the, the opportunity or where opt-in kind of go ahead and place is that opt-in comes in and, and becomes a middleman uh, between the processor and the hard drive. So what Intel Optin does, and I'll, I'll get into it in a little bit more, is provide fast, non-volatile memory uh, in kind of place between the middleman, between the hard drive and the processor. So um, if, if, if you will, uh, and if you have the time, and it's kind of quote, quote, homework for you guys, but if you have the time, uh, go to YouTube and look for uh, Intel Pancake memory uh, or Intel Optin Pancake video. You're going to find a very, very easy way to explain this, and, and I'm just going to walk you guys through it. Uh, so imagine yourself making pancakes on a Sunday evening, uh, and then you, you normally make, uh, I'm sorry, you normally make pancakes on Sunday morning, uh, and, and that's your tradition. Every morning you wake up and you make pancakes. So uh, imagine that every day, I'm sorry, every Sunday that you wake up, you'll have to go to the store and buy flour, sugar, maple syrup, eggs. Imagine that every single time you make those pancakes, you have to go to a store and get them. So imagine that into a computer world. So uh, you or the pancakes are the data or the task. So every time you have to go to task, you have to go back to a hard drive, get the data, and retrieve it back to your processor to process the information. So that's kind of the analogy. So what Intel, Intel Optin is, Intel Optin is like a pantry. Imagine a pantry in your house on a Sunday. So instead of you having to go to a store and purchase every single time all the ingredients, you have a pantry in which you store the most common or the most frequently used items. In this case, your pancake batter, your eggs, uh, your sugar, your maple syrup. 
So in this case, a task, instead of having a recurring task, instead of having to continuously go into the drive to go ahead and fetch it or data, uh, having to go ahead all the way to the drive and fetch it there, you're going to have a non-volatile solution that's going to store that information that knows that you use that information and use those files most commonly and access them faster than you would if you had to go back to a hard drive. So uh, that kind of in a nutshell, and you can go ahead and watch the video and, 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 and it'll go in further detail than I did in, in a far more graphic explanation. But that's kind of how uh, the whole setup works with Intel Optimum. So what exactly is Intel Optimum? And, and I want to make very heavy emphasis on memory and make the differentiation between Intel Optimum memory and Intel memory storage. Because you're gonna, I'm sorry, Intel Optimum storage. Because you're gonna hear about uh, Intel talking about Optimum storage, and it's, it's definitely a great technology. It's based on 3D X point memory media, which is not the same as SATA, not the same as NAND. So uh, we're, we're providing faster, uh, faster performance and faster uh, speed, and it's the scalability of this cross point structure which actually makes it easier to uh, provide a better cost per uh, gigabyte as we go ahead and scale our cost through uh, the manufacturing process. But uh, I'm not going to get into 3D X point, but I just want to kind of differentiate that, yes, we're going to have Intel Optin storage for servers and for some gaming systems, but what we're going to talk today is Intel Optin memory, which leverages on the 3D X point memory media in order to create a system accelerator uh, for your system. So essentially, Intel Optin Memory is a system acceleration solution uh, that works on 7th gen Intel Core Processor platforms. Um, again, this, this Intel solution uses Intel Optin Memory, which is based on 3D X point memory media. Uh, so 3D X point needs some, that, that's just the technology, right? So mm -hmm. the technology needs some sort of driver or software to interact, in which that's where the rapid storage technology, or RSD, which you're going to hear about it, driver plays along. So between the RSD uh, driver and the 3D X point, that's how Intel Optin memory works. So this new memory uh, media is located between the processor and slower SATA-based storage devices. So when I talk about SATA-based uh, devices, it could be a hard drive, it could be a, a hybrid solution or a SSHD, or it can be a SATA SSD as well. So um, the way it works it, is that Intel Optin can store commonly used data in programs closer to the processor so the system can access information more quickly with improved overall system responsiveness. Um, Intel Optin, what it does, Intel Optin memory, what it does is kind of unite memory and storage into one virtual drive, which is visible only to the OS with an optimized system interconnect. So, and then it uses RSD or the Intel Rep Storage uh, driver to accelerate performance and responsiveness of the PC. Um, that's kind of like a lot of information, but uh, just go back to the example of the pancake, right? So what Intel Optin does is that pantry. So if if my system knows and learns, and the reason why it learns and knows me is because of the RST driver, uh, if my system knows that I use Photoshop every single day, it's going to know that it needs to optimize the files that I use for uh, Intel Photoshop. I'm sorry, for, for Photoshop. Or if it knows that I use Excel, then it's going to optimize Excel. And even it's going to go into an even further granular granularity. So if if I'm at repetitive task and I always use the same Excel file, or if I always use the same macros, or if my job is pretty much use the same database constantly over and over and over, it's going to go ahead and optimize that. So you're not going to see the perform. You're going to notice some of the performance gains out of the box. But as the system learns and as the system continues to improve and uh, learn from your usage, you're going to see uh, the continuous improvement on the performance of the system. So where does the Intel Optin memory sit? So it sits uh, in the end of 2 connector. Uh, it's, it has a, a modular format that's uh, single-sided. As you can see, it goes into a PCIe uh, connection on the processor. Um, some people has, have noted, saying, hey, Jorge, there's two M.2 connectors in my system. Can I connect two Intel Optin memory uh, sticks there? No. Uh, unfortunately, for uh, system acceleration, we can only use one. Uh, so in this case, you only have one. Um, so like I said, we, we'll, 
will have those two physical devices that are pairing into one single volume. So if you go to your system properties, what you're going to see is just one drive. You're not going to see it split it in two. Um, at the current version where we are, you won't be able to manage or manually manage files between one storage into another one because, again, it's paired into a single volume, which makes it easier in order to go ahead and manage it. And especially if you, uh, if you deploy this, this solution across an enterprise or a larger company, you don't want users tampering with it. So essentially what a regular user would see is just the system, a system drive, and uh, the information located in the, in the drive. So as I, as I mentioned, yes, some important tasks and files are immediately recognized and accelerated, but the system as it learns is going to get even better and better performance because uh, applications are constantly monitored and uh, accelerated as well. And we're going to have two flavors. Uh, for the most, I think for our audience, uh, we're going to talk about the 16 gigabyte uh, drive, uh, which is the more mainstream and where we're going to see a lot of uh, our HP systems, I would say 99% of the HP commercial systems are going to be loaded with a 16 gigabyte drive, uh, and it's always going to be paired with a 7 Gen Intel Core processor. All right, so that was a lot of information. So I just kind of go back uh, again and 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 and, and stay, take a couple of steps on how that acceleration works. So it continuously evolves and and makes uh, the PC responsive to every individual user. So Again, it, it learns, the, the RST driver learns from your trends, learns from your what you do. So if this week I was using a lot of Excel, but uh, let's say next week I have to do a lot of video editing, then the system's gonna learn that now I need to optimize my video encode, uh, coding solutions or my encoding drivers, now that's gonna be optimized. So it's gonna continue to learn and move the information uh, without any user input. So you know, uh, one of the, Another common question that I get is, okay, what is, why is this different, or how is this different to a hybrid drive? So for those people that don't know what a hybrid drive is, this one we have a, a, a PC that has a large storage solution, like a large spinning drive, but has a smaller SSD that does some of the cache or some of, some of the OS loading and some of the OS applications. Um, I would say the biggest difference on it is that uh, in those scenarios on the hybrid systems, you have to manually manage files. So you, you're going to see two drives in your system, and you're going to have to manually decide where or what goes where. Um, so that kind of, it sounds like it's a small difference, but as a system administrator, or as you work into larger companies, and you start seeing users tampering with those hybrid models, uh, it, it gets complicated, and you start losing uh, the benefits across across time, whether with Intel opting, actually the user just sees the C drive that they're used to see, and there's no manageability. They they, don't, they can't change it uh, unless you go ahead and and, uh, and disable Intel opting, in which that's that's another story. Um, so we went through how acceleration works, and I kind of want to go through on what are the benefits or where are the, the actual performance benefits. Right, so uh, I, I divide it in three categories. So we have the mainstream user, right, the, the regular user, where we're going to see uh, the storage performance uh, increase, the boot time, which uh, some people complain, and, and I'm telling you, I, I normal, I've been using SSDs for a while, and I had to switch for a, for a, a spinning drive for a moment, and just that loading time from booting my system in the morning, uh, it, it, it was a pain. So. Uh, after I started working with Intel Opting, um, uh, I, I noticed that the performance, and I didn't have to sacrifice the storage, so, so it was great. Um, a, a regular task, like launching your web browser, we can go five times faster than it. And, and you're going to see a whole list here. Uh, if you're a gamer, launching of the game, you're going to get 65, 67% faster when we talk about that. When we are, if you talk about video editing, um, open a large media project, again, going back to the Photoshop uh, conversation, you're going to go four times faster when we go with Intel Opting versus a just a spinning drive solution, right? Um, a, a lot of people tell me, well, so is this, can I expect the same performance of an SSD? Uh, my answer is no. We, we What we say is we're going to offer an SSD-like performance just because in the terms of performance, when, when we go and do our benchmarks, we're going to go a little bit about our benchmarks. 
you're going to see some difference, uh, slight difference, but still it's not the same as working on an SSD. So that's why we like to use, or I prefer to stay on the SSD like. Yes, you're going to get SSD like performance. What is the benefit here, or what's the overall score? Uh, I'm sorry, where do you see the value? Is that you don't have to sacrifice space. You don't have to go through that crossroad that we talked at the beginning of the session in which should I stay with the large storage and just painfully slow one terabyte spinning drive or larger. I mean, maybe I could have a, 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 a larger configuration uh, and then just painfully slow uh, drive just because I need the space or should I go with lower space but then I need more, I need more storage and I can't afford two high capacity SSDs. So with Intel Optane, you don't have to sacrifice that because Intel Optane is going to give you that SSD-like performance that you're expecting without sacrificing the hard drive, which is, for me, the key value uh, proposition overall as, as we go ahead and talk about Intel Optane. So this is a, a quick comparison, uh, and this is pretty much what I was uh, mentioning about uh, before, about comparing uh, a one terabyte solution, what we normally have, this is the, that's the baseline, Spinning drive, regular memory configuration, regular CPU. So uh, if we compare it to a 256 SATA uh, SSD, then we're going to start seeing some performance benefits. Uh, it's about uh, the SATA is going to give you 28% 2x to response. But then as we go up the stack and compare it again at an Intel Optum memory with a one terabyte, uh, we're going to be, like I mentioned before, similar performance or 28 faster similar responsiveness. The storage performance is going to be better because as you can see it's about 14x faster and then the device latency is going to be heavily, heavily improved. The lower the number, the better uh, the latency uh, is when we talk about drives. I'm not going to go into 32 just because what I mentioned initially, we're not uh, going to see a lot of systems with 32. Mostly we're going to see them at the gaming space or enthusiasts. But as we see go into the enterprise and, and uh, market, then that's kind of where, where we're going to see more of the volume at the 61. So this is probably my favorite slide. And, and as I was going through training and, and people were uh, explaining me this, uh, I, I was shocked. Because, I mean, in, in, uh, I've been one of those that say, oh, yeah, as you pile on memory, you're going to get better performance. And as I was going through the benchmarks and going through the education process, uh, I was shocked to learn that uh, memory doesn't scale performance when we move to two, I'm sorry, from four, four gigabytes of RAM. And if we move to eight, as you can see on, on the bars, uh, there's not a lot of change, right? So we have the two by two uh, gigabytes, we got the two by four, and we get the two by eight. And the memory or the performance doesn't scale. Uh, there's there's not a lot of uh, changes in the variation when we go ahead and move from four four gigas four gigs of four gigs of RAM to eight, eight to even sixteen. There's not a lot of variation on performance. But where do we see the change, or where do we see uh, a change in the performance? Is we see a better performance on a four gigabytes of RAM with sixteen uh, gigs of the memory on the same spinning drive. We get around a ten percent or 12% actually, if you want to be very accurate, or 10%, we see a 10% increase. And like I mentioned at the beginning, I've always been one of those that say, oh, you should go with the 8 gig of the rank because you're going to get better performance. The reality is that you're not. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, system performance gains when you move from 4 to 8. Yes, you can, you, you're going to get a little bit more, you're going to get more memory and you're going to get the benefits of memory, but overall system performance, when we talk about the measurement on overall performance when offering Office or working with uh, Photoshop, it doesn't scale from 4 to 8. So what we're saying here is that um, in this market where memory or traditional memory is being a commodity and prices are continuing going up, Intel Optin memory comes to play into a really good solution where we manage to be price parity at this point and not only are we price parity with uh, 8 gigs of RAM, but we're also able to provide, as you can see on the chart above, better performance than those 8 gigs at the same price uh, without sacrificing any storage or without sacrificing any space. 
it's for me it's a, it's a great value I mean I think if you if you also want to take another message or another key message from this is how uh, the system performance in the whole story of round of RAM adding piling RAM uh, is just gonna improve your performance um, that's that's a great story to, to go ahead and have uh, in the back of your hands so where would I see the benefits of interlocking memory? So we, we saw a little bit uh, before, but definitely, I mean, uh, if we go to the normal statistics, uh, a normal consumer, a normal IT user goes through two power cycles uh, a day, or, or sometimes if the user doesn't reboot, let's say, a couple, a couple days, uh, a normal user launches between 11 and 14 applications. Um, and that same app gets launched seven or eight times. Uh, for instance, in my case, I know PowerPoint and, and Excel. I open those uh, I open those apps at least 10 to 12 times a day, if little. Uh, again, Outlook, Word, um, and when I'm doing a lot of, uh, or some video editing, again, I open several, or have several applications. So every time I open and close that application, every time I go through a power cycle, every time I reboot, uh, on whenever I get a patch uh, and my system reboots, uh, those processes is where you can see the benefits of Intel opt-in. So we're talking about it between 80 and 140 different events where you can get the performance gains of Intel opt-in across time. Um, so this is kind of going back to 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 the, the one of the most common questions that I was mentioning below, uh, before is. What's the difference between dual drive and Intel optic drive? And Jorge, this, we've seen it before. We've seen this technology in the past. What is different, right? So um, again, like I was saying, when you have a dual drive, you have the SSD and the hard drive, you have to manually select which drive to install the OS, where the, where the file is going, where the applications. There's the chance um, to go ahead and move and, and, and manage. Um, as the SSD fills up, you'll have to manually move files just to manage that space. And again, if you're an IT pro or you're a system administrator, then probably that's an easy task for you. But as we deployed this into a company and we deployed this into different uh, systems of different organizations, then I, uh, it's gonna be a little bit harder for those users to manage the storage. And again, if they move the incorrect file or if they try to clear it up, they might create errors and damage the system or damage the OS. So the difference with Intel opt-in is that installs and enables Intel opt-in memory. So it once it's connected and the software uh, is loaded uh, and deployed, whether it's a corporate deployment or if it's just you at home or a, a, a person that just wants to assemble it or you just order your system from, from HP.com or you order your system from PCM uh, and you order, you got the box, you're ready. It has Intel opt-in, you put it up and that's it. You don't need to set up anything. You don't need to select where you want to purchase this. Um, so as we go into what files are needed, um, you don't have to select which goes or what goes where. Uh, and like I mentioned, this is just one single storage solution. So users won't see two drives and they won't be able to reorganize when this stuff. And again, it, it learns, which is for me one of the key benefits of this is that it continues learning based on your usage and your trends. So um, that was kind of a, a quick intro. Hopefully uh, it cleared up and gave you the information on, on what Intel Optin is uh, and how we're positioning Intel Optin memory right now for desktops. Uh, you can see Intel Optin memory in workstations um, in some time Q1 or, or quarter one uh, of this uh, 2018, you're about to start. And you're gonna see it in notebooks also uh, in sometime in the second half of 2018. But for now, our focus is desktop. So with that, um, I'll give uh, my good friend Rob Hatch from HP uh, the panel so he can go ahead and uh, present. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Sounds good. Looks good as well. Great. Great. Thank you. So thanks for taking some time on this uh, this Wednesday afternoon. Appreciate the opportunity to chat with everyone. Hope everyone's having a good uh, good holiday season. So there's some really great info from 
from Jorge on the Intel Optane technology. And what I wanted to do kind of following up to that is give everyone an idea of the HP desktop uh, portfolio and kind of the forward looking roadmap over the next uh, 12 months. And then give you guys a couple of examples of some of the options that we have right now off the shelf that include that Optane memory. So we'll start here just kind of looking at the different uh, series that we have. So we have our all the way from our entry level 200 series desktop. We got the 400, 600. And then the 705 and the 800 are our elite class uh, systems. The 705s are AMD, so we won't talk about those today, but our 800 series is the uh, elite desk, uh, which features our full suite of security features, deployment features, everything like that. And then, um, and then we've got our elite slice and elite slice for meetings. It's kind of our collaboration PC. Um, so going to the next slide, so this kind of lays out some of the different features that we, we have in some of these things. So we, we start with the Chromebook and, you know, moving a, kind of moving across the page, you can see the features that add on. So in our 2 and 400 series, you get a 12-month life cycle. Once you move up to that 600 series, we go to an 18-month life cycle. So it uh, makes rollouts and, and deployment a lot, more, a lot easier, a lot more consistent for everyone. You can see once we get up into the 800 series, you start adding in the vPro, management, deployment, that kind of thing. Uh, of course, TPM across the board. Um, Jorge talked about security a little bit. We have the HP Sure Start uh, featured in our Elite series, and that is the industry's only self-healing BIOS. Uh, so we can we can talk about that another time, but it, you know you, you can kind of see how the, the features stack up uh, upon each other. One uh, really nice feature once you get into our Elite series is they come with our Elite Premium support, which is U.S. based with no phone tree. So you get a dedicated support line, and there's no phone tree. So you get a live person. You can set up a a callback right so you call in you say hey i want to work with dave he's he's worked with us before he does a good job i want him to call me at two o'clock this afternoon we're going to troubleshoot this the system right so features like that so that's a really nice white glove service that comes out of the box with our elite series products um, so just to give you an idea so within each of these series we do have the different form factors we have the desktop mini uh, which is kind of a thin client size desktop we have the small form factor, we have the, the micro tower or the full tower, and then we have the all-in-one. So this kind of gives you an idea, you know, looking to the first half of 18, where, where our refreshes are coming with the new Intel chipsets, the new Intel processors, that kind of thing as well. So you can see in May, we'll have our 800 G4s coming out. Uh, the 600 G4s will have a, a big refresh in May. Um, we refreshed a lot of our products this this past summer and, and fall. We announced the Elite One 1000, which I'll tell you all a little bit about uh, here at the end. But that just gives you an idea of you know kind of what we're looking looking at over the next 12 months. And then looking at our kind of our entry level desktops, it shows you where where those are coming out as well. Again, looking at that May June time frame for the for the next uh, big refresh. So this just kind of shows you side by side where the where the overlaps will be. So you can see the the 800 G3s are going to be available through November of 18. The G4s come out June of 18. So you'll have that you know three three to four month overlap period to make that transition. Um, we have you know techs and and specialists that can can help with that as we transition to the new series and 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 help simplify all that for you. And then same thing with the 600 series, the 400 series and then down to the 200 series as well. So just wanted to give you a quick overview of what the roadmap look like, how we how we do those transitions, the overlap time frame that you'll have for, for that. And then real quick, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Elite One 1000. So this is the product that we're giving away today. This is the one that we announced uh, back in September. Just wanted to highlight some of the features here. So you can see the product there. It's very, very streamlined, very stylish. Um, you know, you talk about it being your, your personal studio, right? So under performance, you can see 7th gen Intel processors up to one and a half terabytes of SSD or three terabytes of SATA. And then it, it is compatible with that Intel Optane memory. So we talk about the performance benefits of Optane that definitely comes with that um, you know, HP velocity for your connectivity, uh, some other features there as well. Um, it is a... Um, a very robust PC hub, right? You can see the 
the uh, the stack of, of connections that we have there. We have dual display port, one in, one out. We have HDMI out for USB 3.1 ports. It's uh, We've got a security lock on there as well. And on the side, we talk about biometrics. We've got the, the fingerprint sensor. We've got an additional a couple, a couple more USB 3.1s. One's a fast charging port, audio jack as well. So we talked about security a little bit. Um, the any all of our Elite Series products come with these security features, right? And and HP, this is a, a legal approved statement. HP has the world's most secure PCs, right? So we have the HP Sure Start, which is a like I said, it's a self-healing BIOS. So put simply, the way it works is the system keeps a, the the master copy of the BIOS on the motherboard. Every time that PC is booted up. The first thing the system does is it compares the operating copy of the BIOS with that master locked gold standard copy of the BIOS. If there have been any unauthorized changes, the system automatically wipes the operating BIOS, reverts to that, that locked gold standard copy, and that way you're secure against any boot sector attacks, right? So that's the first thing the PC does when it boots up. We also have the, the multi-factor authentication. Um, we have HP SureClick, which is a really interesting technology um, within our browsers. It sort of creates a PC within a browser tab. So when you close that tab, you've you've wiped that connection and it kind of isolates that browser in the shell from the rest of the PC. Um, we have the HP Man Manageability Integration Kit. Just some of, the, some of the features that our Elite Series products have and that are included with this Elite One 1000 system. Uh, we mentioned the biometric authentication with, you know, Windows 10 and, and the, the newer technology. We have the IR camera that you can use, the fingerprint sensor on the side that I touched on. And then just to kind of get, you know, show it, it's the clean design of an all-in-one. It's the full power of a desktop PC. Uh, you can uh, stack them together and really get a true immersive experience with multiple displays. You get your PC as a collaboration hub, that enterprise serviceability and security. And it's really the it's the ultimate office. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's that's just in a in a real quick nutshell. That's that's the HP desktop roadmap. Um, we currently have. Um, I'll back up a little bit. We currently have four, or excuse me, uh, six uh, options that come with Intel Optane memory off the shelf. Um, we have a small form factor and a desktop mini within our 400 series, our 600 series, and our 800 series. And these are all i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 1 terabyte SATA drive with a 16 gig Intel Optane technology. And so those are off the shelf ready to ship. Now, if you have, you know, a slightly different requirement, you know, different configurations, we can absolutely work with you on that. We can build CTOs for you, uh, but those are those are the ones that are off the shelf, ready to ship, ready for you guys to, to take advantage of that new technology today. Um, so that's, you know, that's, I know that, that kind of went through really fast, but that was really the, the basics of what I wanted to show you um, as far as, you know, what we have out there and what we have available with the Intel Optane technology. Um, in our in our full suite of desktops and, and where we're looking to move to for the for the next year through 2018. So um, with that, I'll I'll turn it back to one of the Jorge's and and I think we have some some time for a Q and A. Um, yes, we do, and we do have a couple questions uh, coming in already. The first one states, uh, "I'm sorry, are you saying that SATA?" with Optane is faster than direct SSD? Yeah, uh, so, sorry guys, I was muted. Uh, so what we're saying, and, and again, when we, we have to be careful when we make claims around performance, we make claims around faster. What we're saying is that when paired with a SATA solution, Intel Optane memory is going to provide SSD-like performance. And in some scenarios, we are going to get better results or similar results uh, as uh, when we work with, uh, I would say, another SATA solution or a SATA SSD or similar solution of SSDs, right? So I can go ahead and make a bold 
claim or bold claim and say yes, it's going to be better and faster all the time in every single location because uh, I think that would be irresponsible. But under some scenarios, under some uh, SATA storage devices uh, paired with Intel memory, uh, in, I'm sorry, with Intel optimal memory, yes, we're going to get uh, better performance, and better uh, or at least similar or SSD-like performance. All right, thank you. I hope that answered their question. And the next one goes, regarding memory performance, do you have statistics for memory on an SSD system versus SATA and Optane memory? No, I don't, I don't, I don't have the benchmarks on, on that. Uh, what we have is that single, I mean, we have a lot of benchmarks, but it's mostly that comparison that I showed before of the, of the RAM in a spinning drive. Um, but I can definitely go ahead and look and ask uh, to our benchmark teams or our competition team to see if they have any information or data uh, when we talk about similar performance, but bear with SSDs. So I can I can definitely take that action and we can follow up. All right, thank you. And the next question goes, does PCM provide online and on-site support and where do I find out how it works for elite products? So, so does PCM provide online or on-site support? I know PCM does offer, uh, you know, help desk services um, with Elite support. Uh, that is included with any HP Elite product that you purchase. Um, there's a there's a dedicated phone line. It's uh, uh, it's eight six 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 two five one one seven five. So you call in there, and it's it's a U.S. based uh, phone service, but it's it's. It comes packaged with any Elite product. Um, if you go to hp.com slash go, G-O, slash Elite, uh, that's kind of our Elite product landing page, and we'll have some information on there as well. Um, if you have more specific questions, I'm happy to dive in a little bit more, more to that, uh, but hopefully that answers the question. All right, thank you. And I think this one's a two-parter. It almost sounds like dedicated M2 SATA drive dedicated to the processor, or maybe even like a rated M2 to SATA. Yeah, so uh, the, the right question is also a very common one. Uh, it, it does, so Intel Optane memory as it is right now does not support RAID arrangement. So, it, I mean, we can talk about, about RAID because it, at, at this moment it's not RAID uh, support. I mean, it doesn't support. Uh, we're exploring the possibility or the capability to uh, enable RAID arrangement uh, in an upcoming version of the IRST drive, uh, drivers, but for now it's not supportable. But uh, the, the way it, it, you communicated or you put it in the first part of the question uh, on the M.2 directly communicating, uh, yes, that, that's kind of where where we offer the the performance is when you when it's connected on the M.2 using the PCIe uh, connection, then that's what that's why and that's how we go ahead and get some of that performance gains without having to go through uh, the normal data connection that goes to the spinning drive. All right, thank you. I think this one might be related also, but. Optane is on the M2 PCIe bus, which is faster than SATA connected spinning drive by itself. So that hot cache is faster than an SSD on the SATA bus? I think this is similar in, in what I uh, mentioned before. I mean, it, it, yes, the PCIe is going to provide, uh, it's just making that faster claim, it, it, it's complicated. It's going to provide similar. Uh, performance to an SSD and, and again it's going back to the original value prop of this we're we're not saying that or, or the claim on this is that Intel Optic memory is not going to be uh, faster than an SSD what we're saying is we're going to be able to offer SSD like performance without having to sacrifice the big storage capacities so if you prefer or the user profile really wants to get the SSD like performance and they really don't need the perform the, the storage Capabilities. I, 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 by all means, I believe the SSD uh, path is the right way, and probably they're going to get better performance story around it. But if storage or capacity is a constraint, or they're looking in order to expand, or they, they really can go under 500 megs, or they can really they need the one terabyte storage, this is where we see the value of the uh, And again, it, it's going to offer similar 
or uh, in some cases better performance than an SSD, but uh, we're not making claims that it's going to be better at all times. All right. Thank you very much. And this seems to be the last one. Oh, no, wait. We got a couple more. Can Intel Optane memory improve performance on any model hard drive, even older drives, or just the most recently released hard drives? That's a great question. Uh, I've seen uh, benchmarks and I've seen some reports. And it, I mean, I would say depending on this, oh, I would be careful, depending on the status of that old SSD, I'm sorry, old drive, mm -hmm. old hard drive, because uh, I mean, you know they're finicky and, and they fail. So, I mean, uh, it, it, I've seen it working on the 7, um, 7200, and I've seen on previous version, uh, lower spinning uh, versions of hard drives, on the 5400. Uh, I would say as far as going one year back, maybe two years back, I've seen them working uh, and offering the same performance. Uh, but uh, it's, in this case, when we're shipping new systems, then, I mean, it's, it's something that we're, we're not, kind of concern at this point uh, because we're, we want to accelerate the refresh and we actually want Intel Optin to be one of those drivers for refresh, right? So um, if we go into the after bot market or if, if users are buying the, uh, let's say the white box model or, or building at home and they have an old hard drive and they want to pair the Intel module, I, I would expect uh, if the drivers are updated, the BIOS uh, is updated, the motherboard supports uh, Intel Optin that are going to get the benefits of Intel Optin. All right. Thank you. And so this is hot caching, hot caching like auto tearing, different speed drives on an HPE 3 par. I'm sorry. Can, can you repeat that one? Yeah. Was, uh, so this is hot caching like auto tearing, different speed drives on an HPE 3 PAR. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. I, I won't be able to answer that one. But uh, if you can forward that question to me, and, and I'll, I'll talk to one of our tech guys and, and get the answer on it. Of course. And we can either publish it, yeah, and we can publish on the content, or we can publish it offline later. All right. And Intel Optane is only available on Intel i7 processors, right? Uh, so, yeah, um, no. In, in this case, Intel, uh, you're going to get it on any or it's going to be available on any 7th gen processor. So as you can see, uh, if you saw my slides on uh, the benchmarks uh, on RAM, that testing was done with the uh, Core i3. Um, so it's available on Core i3, it's available on Core i5, Core i7, but it has to be Core i 7th uh, gen processor. And just to, just to stack onto that a little bit, the, the units that we have that are, that are pre-built with Optane, those all include the i5-7500, so the 7th gen i5 uh, processor. Yeah, that's great. And, and as we go up the stack, uh, if you are looking into consumer devices that we already have the 8th gen out, uh, so of course 8th gen is going to support it. Um, and as, as we continue increasing generation over generation, then uh, there's going to be support around Optane 2 as well. On I, as long as it's core, I, uh, it's going to be supported. And if it has an M.2 slot available, of course. All right. Thank you. And does HP make an HP branded Intel Optane module or do we, do we sell the Intel branded module? That is a, is a good question. Jorge, do you know if we're offering that as an aftermarket option? Yeah, so uh, you're going to, I mean, the, the Intel Optin memory, it, it's Intel uh, Optin, and, and you're going to see it uh, in your desktop configurator uh, if you go into the aftermarket option. Uh, I think it's listed there with a specific part number, so you can add it there. Okay. Uh, and nice. as, yeah, as Rob mentioned also, uh, you can also, on, on the CTO conversation, you can have it there, and on SmartBuys. Um, we're, we're working into including and having a, a larger portfolio in smart bytes, uh with Intel Optin. But for now, those are the options that we have. But again, in an aftermarket, you should be able to add it and configure it as well. Yep. Yeah, see, we do have the, the 16 gig uh, Optane option available yeah. to add into a system. But that is, it is Intel, it's not HP branded. I mean, it's still an, an Intel product sold through HP. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, that appears to be the last one. I'll leave the floor open for you guys to uh, give your final statements. 
All right, so uh, real quick, thank you everyone for joining. Um, again, just kind of quick summary on, on what are the value props of, of Intel Optane is offering an SSD-like performance without sacrificing or compromising storage. Um, it, it provides easier manageability in the fact that everything is consolidated in one single storage uh, solution. Um, and <clears throat> in, with, with the uh, current situation and commodity prices uh, with memory going up, it offers a price parity solution where we can go ahead and offer users great performance story without uh, breaking a buck and without sacrificing uh, storage solutions. Uh, Rob, go with HP. Yeah, for sure, absolutely, go HP. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I kind of figured, I thought one of these, it would be asked in the, in the Q&A, but just to give you all an idea of the cost difference, right, and these are list, list prices, so work with your PCM rep, obviously, you know, they can usually do better than, than list pricing. But just to give you an idea, so in our 800G3 Mini, an i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte spinning drive, list price on that is 849 an i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 uh, SSD, list price on that is 879 So 30 bucks more, you get a faster drive, but you're only getting a quarter of the storage capacity. For the Optane option, so i5, 8 gig, 1 terabyte SATA, and then the 16 gig Optane, that's 909 So for 30 bucks more than the SSD option, you're getting comparable performance, sometimes better, most, you know, but sometimes comparable, but you're getting four times the storage. And that's, you know, like what Jorge talked about, that's that's really the, the emphasis. You get the quality performance, but then you get the increased storage capacity as well. So that gives you a, kind of a, a broad overview of, of what the pricing is. You know, we have options off the shelf. We have options to add in the Optane yourself. After the fact, we can build you you know, to your exact specifications, including that Optane technology, just reach out to your PCM rep, and we're we're happy to help in in any way we can. That's great, awesome. All right. So with that, many thanks to our speakers, Jorge Hernandez and Rob Hatch, and thank you all for joining us today. Please be sure to check out www.pcm.com forward slash webinars for our on-demand recordings and our upcoming webinar schedule. We will be choosing a winner at random, so stay tuned for an email for to win the HP all-in-one PC. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you again for future webinars. Have a great day. <laughs>